three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Hunter here. Hope you're having a great night, day, weekend, whenever you're checking this out. I have a review. Oh, I'm so happy to say this. I have a new review for the latest Wes Anderson film. Thank God Wes Anderson is back, baby. Woo! So, let me just say, I'm a slut for Wes Anderson. I think Wes Anderson is fucking brilliant. I think he is still underrated for as much as his films are praised. It just missed my list a couple years ago, but uh, I think I mentioned it actually as an honorable mention. But God damn it, I love the French French Dispatch so much. I think that movie is fucking incredible. That <clears throat> that might be a top three Anderson film for me. Like I love French Dispatch. Um, oh crap! As I say that now, uh, top three Anderson films probably Fantastic Mr. Fox. Grand Budapest, then then French Dispatch, maybe? Like, I'd have to think about that, but... uh Oh, God, Life Aquatic. I do love Life Aquatic. I'd have to think about it, but Wes Anderson's the shit. I, I, Wes Anderson is the fucking shit. I love Wes Anderson, and I get genuinely giddy whenever he has a new film coming out. So, oh, yeah, Raw Tinderbox. God damn, he does so much great shit. But, um, yeah, he's incredible. And so when I heard that he was doing another film, I went, oh, hell yeah, day one, I'm there. So I saw this earlier tonight, and what I can say about this is this is maybe the most Wes Anderson movie Wes Anderson has ever made. And I think people will either love it or hate it because of that. Because if you're not a Wes Anderson fan, I will tell you right now, this will not turn you in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to make a comparison to Zack Snyder, and I feel gross for even doing it, but it's kind of like if you were to show someone, so I guess you could show me, if you're going to show someone who hated Zack Snyder, Man of Steel. Because Man of Steel is maybe the most Zack Snyder film Zack Snyder's ever made. I know some people say Sucker Punch, or as I call it, Donkey Punch, because that's the one thing he doesn't put those fucking women through, fucking asshole. Anyways, uh, but, but... Man of Steel might be the most Zack Snyder film he's ever made. It is Zack Snyder-ish as fuck. This is so unapologetically Wes Anderson. And that's honestly what I love about it. So there, so Jason Schwartzman, he plays uh, Augie. Uh, and he is a, um, he is a father with several kids. I think he has three kids. And basically, he goes to this small rural town named, of course, Asteroid City to go ahead and compete in a in, in, in a uh, stargazing event. And honestly, that's about all I can tell you uh, plot-wise without spoiling shit. Um, because the thing about this movie is that where it ends and what it ends up saying... I think that's what's going to drive some people to just go, really? After all that, really? That's what you have to say? And I think that's what I actually love the most about it. Is that what it has to say is, it, it's it, yeah, that, again, I, I don't want to spoil, but, but what it ends up saying, I went, okay, yeah, I actually like that this is where you landed on this. But the usual players are here. Um... Jason Schwartzman, as I mentioned, uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, plays uh, this actress, Midge Campbell. And Scarlett Johansson, I I mean, look, I'll I'll go on my rant. Oh, my God, she's so hot. Oh, my God, Scarlett Johansson. Ha, 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 ha. Um, <laughs> I mean, fucking gorgeous. But when you go through her filmography and you, you look at things like um, – I stand by it. I enjoy Black Widow. I know some people don't. That's fine. You're wrong. But I enjoy Black Widow. Um, Jojo Rabbit and Marriage Story – I could make the case she 
should have won the Oscar for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress in the same year. Because she's amazing in Mary's Story. And in Jojo Rabbit, holy shit, as Rosie, she's incredible. And I and I was actually pretty, like, like I, I really think she slept on. As, as celebrated as Johansson is, I do think that her career does get... I, I think it's underappreciated, to be honest. I think it's going to be one of those things where... I know people always say Meryl Streep's the best actress in Hollywood. The gap between Meryl Streep and Scarlett Johansson is a lot closer than people want to admit. And I will simply leave it at that. I look forward to your comments. But when you look at, you know, those films, she's really great and sane, too. But uh, even not counting the Marvel stuff, you know, looking at something like Lucy, she's great in Chef. Holy shit. She's amazing in her just doing a voice, but not everyone can be a voice actress. Watch What If. Uh, but she's a great voice actress. She proves it there. Also in Isle of Dogs. She's great in Hitchcock. She's amazing in Don John. You know, fucking hot, but a total manipulative bitch. And she shows how sex can be, you know, utilized to manipulate someone. I mean, it's Scarlett Johansson. And what, I mean, come on, what would you? But but I love what she plays, uh, plays Barbara in that. Uh, Under the Skin... I know people go, yeah, oh my god, you get to see her naked. I mean, yeah, admittedly awesome, but that movie is fucking horrifying. That is one. That is a Black Mirror slash Twilight Zone episode. That movie is terrifying, and she's terrifying in it. And yeah, love that movie. Uh, other Bolin girl, like I mean, I can literally keep going back. Oh my god, Nanny Diaries, like she's she's great in pretty much everything, and. I was really happy to see her here get to once again prove why she is one of the best actresses that we have that we have working to get that today. Her and Schwartzman have great chemistry with each other, and I was really happy whenever I got to see them see them interact. Um, another person I was really happy to see show out Tom Hanks. I I, I just watched uh, a man named Otto, uh, or a man called Otto. I saw that maybe like like a week ago i got really high in the morning and randomly watched it that's a really fun movie i enjoyed that quite a bit and it was nice to see tom hanks in something that i didn't hate him in because i if you've listened to the show uh, you know recently i hate elvis 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 i hate that movie so goddamn much i hate that it exists i hate that that uh people got oscar nominations for that i fucking hate pinocchio that movie's fucking creepy it might as well be age of ultron for kids i fucking hate pinocchio i hate his offensive accent in it i fucking hate pinocchio so i was the last couple tom hanks films have really royally pissed me off uh elvis was on my worst of list i think pinocchio was tied for my number 10 like i i i, I fucking hate both those movies so seeing him in A Man Called Otto and then seeing him in this, it's like, oh, hell yeah, that's right. Tom Hanks is one of the best actors we've ever had. Totally makes sense. He plays uh, Augie's uh, father-in-law and the conversations <laughs> that they have, he just, he hates Augie in a way that's almost inspired. And he's not like a super asshole to him about it. But he just makes these just one or two comments. Just, you know those comments that stick in your head that maybe an ex might have told you were, you know, something like, I, I don't know, like, you know, when you cry, you sound like your mother or something like that. Like, like one of those things you'd go like, what the fuck? Like later, and it would just kind of almost marinate in your mind. That That's Tom Hanks' Stanley. He's just, he just gets these nice little barbs in that you can almost see Augie like react in real time and kind of go, oh, all right, that was like that was fucked. It's it's fascinating, but he's he's awesome. Tom Hanks is greatness and gets some incredible zingers in. Uh, Brian Cranston is in this movie, and look, I, I think Brian Cranston. I, I think he's another guy like Hanks. Where yes, Breaking Bad's amazing. We know Walter White, fucking awesome. You know Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, another show that I think people like Malcolm in the Middle is such a wonderful evolution of something like married with children I, I don't understand why people don't give cranston his props more i it, it it really leads to that whole that whole kind of television movie 
divide which really shouldn't exist if you're a great actor or actress or however you identify that's what should fucking matter is that if you can bring it and he always does and uh, i was really happy to see him uh get to show out a little bit here he kind of has a rod serling type role in this movie and he nails it he absolutely nails it i i don't think um i don't know what they're gonna do with the twilight zone i know they just canceled that you know that show uh, or the uh, the reboot, but if they were gonna do like a one off a one off or something like that, I would love Cranston to do it. Like he would be a great host for a Twilight Zone type thing. I I know he's gonna retire and you know spend you know his millions of dollars and hang out with his partner, which is awesome. You know I I'm, I'm happy he's gonna do that. But goddamn, if he could if he could be coerced to come out of retirement, just do like one of those Twilight Zone one offs or something like that. That would be really cool. But I, I absolutely love them in, in, in this. I love the role and, and the way that he sells everything that's happening in the movie is so fucking it, it's fascinating. I, I love his performance. The movie is so Russian dollish in the sense that it's it's like a movie within a movie. And that's what I'll that's all I'll say without potentially spoiling more, because a lot of this movie, I do think people are going to kind of be sitting there going, what the fuck am I watching? And I, and I think people are going to be confused for a little bit. But the movie's intentionally doing that. Like, you, you just you need to hang in there with the movie. And I will say this is a movie that you definitely don't want to be on your phone on. You definitely actually want to be, you know, paying attention. But, um, but oh, my God, he's, like, he's great in it. But the movie is, it's typical Wes Anderson. It's an amazing score. The cinematography is top-notch. Absolutely top-notch. And... There is this plot point that's brought in, um, which kind of leads to the whole Asteroid City name where you go, oh, wow, I was not expecting that. And it's such a pleasant surprise in the way that everyone freaks out about this thing and how it pushes the movie forward. Again, not spoiling. I, I just kept finding myself laughing. At the end of the day, that's a, at the end of the day, that's what I want from a Wes Anderson movie. I want to be entertained. I want to hear some great music. And I want to think a little bit. And this movie definitely makes you think as far as where it lands and what it does ultimately end up saying. And again, I do think some people are going to be a little peeved by the simplicity of what it does end up saying. But I don't think I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, like it's just I I I think there's a lot more to that um, than people might take away even though the message is very simple. It's something that I, I found myself really thinking on as I, was, as I was heading home. I was like, huh, okay. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? I actually, yeah, okay, I like that. I personally, right now, just kind of getting my final thoughts because, again, I do want to kind of leave this somewhat vague. I don't know where I would put this on my best of, but I think it would be on there. I'm not going to put it on there right now because I'm, I'm constantly adjusting my list, which is why the best of and worst of takes so long. But I'm I'm tweaking it right now. It, it'd probably be like maybe number nine on my list right now. Be, be low. But it, this is definitely one of those movies I want to rewatch. Um, my theater was having a blast, I will say. There was probably about 50 people. Like It was actually almost sold out, which I was very happy about, even though it was a smaller theater. But... The audience I saw it with were a bunch of Wes Anderson nerds. They knew they, the people were laughing when he was clearly wanting them to. There was definitely some whispering amongst you know certain people. Yeah, this was definitely a Wes Anderson crowd. And, and it did actually enhance the movie for me. So I was really happy to see it with some people who appreciate Wes Anderson. You know, so I, I was very happy with that. But this is a movie I absolutely adore. I, I, again, I don't know... Like, I'd have to really sit down and think about my Wes Anderson rankings as far as where I'd put everything. But I really enjoyed this. Like, I had a lot of fun with this movie. And I, I laughed hard. I laughed hard. And I actually put on the score as I was heading home. Like, I I really enjoyed this movie. This is a solid, solid A for me. I had so much fun with this movie. Again, this is probably the most Wes Anderson movie. This is the most Wes Anderson-iest movie <laughs> that he's probably ever made it is unapologetically wes anderson so if you're not a wes anderson fan 
I would. I mean, you can watch it, but I doubt this will be the thing that makes you go. That makes you go. Oh yeah, he's brilliant. Uh, watch Grand Budapest for that. But I really enjoyed this, and I, I had a ball. I, I had so much fun with it, and I'm excited to buy this when this comes out because I will definitely be rewatching this for sure. But Asteroid City, what did y'all think? Let us know in the comments. You can follow me on uh, it's Instagram, the Twitter, and uh, TikTok at jhunterrealpineapple. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and rate the show. It definitely helps us out. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneUp, and Samsung Podcast at The Real Pineapple. You can go ahead and find us as well on Facebook, like both our pages, at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. You can go ahead and find us on YouTube. You can just go ahead and search The Real Pineapple, and our page will come up. I'm uploading all of our backlogged uh, reviews, so I'm about halfway through our catalog, so we're getting there. But soon we'll be caught up with all of our stuff, but our new stuff is being uploaded there as well. So if you prefer using YouTube, you can find us there, uh, in including new reviews. And you can go ahead and find me, <coughs> pardon me, uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunter, real pineapple. I'm going to be streaming here for the first time next week's solo. I'm actually really excited. But I'm going to be streaming uh, AEW Fight Forever. But I'm going to talk some movies, going to talk some box office, and, you know, just have a conversation with y'all. So I'm really excited to see what, uh, uh, how that goes. And, um, I'll be letting y'all know what the day is going to be next week. I'm still figuring out what day I want to land on and a streaming schedule moving forward because I am going to be streaming more frequently, but I'm excited. I'm excited to, uh, get on Twitch and, uh, and hopefully have some fun, but, but, uh, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your support. Stay safe out there. Um, we're going to have reviews coming up next week for, oh gosh, what do we have come up? Uh, oh yeah, we got, all the Indiana Jones films, I'm going to start reviewing, uh, have a review for each one of those uh, one day a week, starting on Monday, leading up to uh, Dial of Destiny. So uh, Raiders will be Monday, uh, Temple will be Tuesday, Crusade will be Wednesday, and then I will have uh, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull uploaded on Thursday, leading up to uh, the review of Dial of Destiny on Friday. Because uh, I am going to... Uh, yeah, so actually next week we're going to have a review a day. That's going to be crazy. And then I'm going to have something to review for the 4th of July. I haven't to figure out what I'm going to review for the 4th yet. But since the 4th is a week from Tuesday, I will have something dropping on the 4th. I'll let you all know what it is as we get closer. I, I'm still thinking on that. But, uh, yeah, we've got quite a few reviews coming down the pipeline. So uh, please stay tuned. But, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you soon.